Hi, in uh, this lesson video, we'll learn about the different support systems for deep excavation. We will learn about the different approaches to retain uh, vertical uh, earth walls of an ex excavation hall, uh, the failure modes and safety hazards for a deep excavation system, the calculation process to select appropriate uh, dewatering pump size, and the types and design considerations of uh, dewatering systems. Uh, the term uh, deep excavation here refers to a dig with uh, foundation depth is more than around one story uh, high that requires vertical earth walls due to limited space around the site. Uh, soil strength and high water table uh, make deep excavation unsafe and not suitable to construct the underground uh, structure. Deep excavation can cause uh, soil failures in the earth uh, wall and the bottom of the excavation deck. The excavation wall can have the shown four uh, failures. Tension cracks, usually from a horizontal distance of uh, one uh, half to three quarters times the depth of the excavation measured from the excavation edge. Tension cracks can get worse and cause other failure, failures like sliding, subsidence, uh, bulge, and toppling. The excavation bottom can fail by either heaving or boiling. Uh, bottom heaving, uh, heaving or squeezing is caused by uh, the downward pressure created by the weight of the uh, of uh, the adjacent soil. Uh, this pressure causes a bulge into the bottom of the cut. Uh, heaving and squeezing can occur even when an excavation retaining wall has been properly installed. On the other hand, boiling is uh, evidenced by an upward water flow into the bottom of the cut. Uh, a high water table is one of the causes of boiling. Boiling produces a quick condition in the bottom of the cut and can occur even when the excavation retaining system is utilized. We will cover two main support systems for deep excavation, uh, retaining walls and dewatering systems. Let's start with the different systems to retain vertical earth walls. Excavation retaining uh, wall systems can, can have different structural approaches and materials to resist the soil lateral load. And hybrid systems can be designed to overcome specific project uh, requirements. We will cover here five main systems as summarized in each uh, figure. Each system can stand by itself or as properly uh, happen uh, probably happens it uh, requires additional help from bracing elements. Retaining wall systems are constructed uh, very similar to piles, so I will highly recommend that you check the piling and deep excavation lesson before you continue with this lesson. Retaining walls can be created by driving steel uh, sheet piles along the perimeter and utilize the interlocking formed uh, edges uh, between the sheet piles to construct a continuous retaining wall. To strengthen the sheet piles lateral, la uh, lateral uh, rigidity, uh, three bracing options can be implemented individually or together. Tiebacks, uh, uh, tieback ground anchors, tieback using a dead man locks, or uh, a bracing frame inside the dig hole made from whales and struts. Let's uh, check this animation of a uh, of a uh, driving of driving uh, for, for driving a sheet pile. Vibratory drivers are used to help the sheet pile penetrate the ground under just the dead load. Back hose can be equipped with vibratory drivers, which can impose additional force to drive the sheet lines.
After driving the sheet piles, the soil is excavated in left of 5 to 6 feet height, and every exposed left of the pile is reinforced by drilling ground anchors as we can see in this video. The anchors are drilled and grouted using a special drilling machine, and the goal is to reach the part of the soil behind the sheet pile that's beyond the soil uh, sheet failure surface. The ground anchors are pre-stressed again against uh, horizontal whaling beams. And these whaling beams hold the sheet pile and the soil behind it. In some cases, ground anchors cannot be used due to the existence of dense underground utilities or an existing structure close to the sheet piles. In the case of a bracing system, in this case, a bracing system can be constructed inside the excavation holes to uh, take on the soil lateral load uh, from the opposite excavation sides and use them to counter, uh, counter each other. Bracing is the way to go in the deep excavation holes with small uh, uh, footprints, like shaft or tank, tank excavations. Uh, the bracing system is composed of whales, Corner braces, horizontal struts, center posts, and pressure jacks. The bottom photo here shows a bracing uh, frame for a sheet pile retaining wall. The building footprint is uh, not that large, so bracing posts are not bracing posts are not needed. The top picture shows a hybrid bracing approach where ground anchors uh, and corner braces are used. The second retaining wall system is the soldier uh, piles with laggings between them. Uh, H uh, steel beams are driven into the ground using vibratory drivers. Between the piles different fillers or laggings can be put in place to carry the soil load and then transfer it to the piles. Additional lateral support can be provided with two main bracing options, either the ground anchors or bracing frames. Let's watch this uh, video of soldier pile retaining walls. You see the pile driving uh, driver installing the H-beams uh, in ground. And then wood laggings are installed in between. Wood lagging is installed in layers following the soil excavation to hold the created soil uh, vertical load. But wood lagging is not the only way to fill between the piles. Uh, reinforced concrete can be constructed between the piles, but that requires form work uh, to hold uh, uh, to, to be placed and, and removed. Uh, it's, uh, it's more common to use uh, shotcrete instead of uh, cast in place concrete due to its easiness and saving the time and cost of foam work. The third retaining wall is constructed by boring uh, cast in place concrete piles adjacent to each other uh, along the retaining wall line. There are different variations of this uh, system, retaining system. The piles don't have to be right next to each other. There can be spacing between uh, them that's filled with shot creep, similar to soldier piles. To improve the water tightness of the wall, second piles uh, can be uh, bored as a first phase and then followed with pouring the concrete uh, piles that eat from the material of the first phase piles, as we will see very soon in the next slide. Also, the pile can be reinforced with H-beam uh, instead of reinforcement K rebar cages. The retaining wall piles are uh, bored the same way for constructing uh, deep foundation piles, as explained in a previous lesson video. 
the lateral load capacity of auger, auger drilled uh, cast in place piles can be improved by constructing deeper piles or using bracings, uh, bracing frames or ground anchors. Let's see this uh, video of constructing a retaining wall using uh, auger concrete piles. You will notice at the uh, end the two ways of placing uh, the piles, the tangent alignment or the secant alignment. Uh, the tangent continuous uh, the tangent contiguous uh, alignment is the quickest and most cost effective form of board uh, pile walls. This technique is suitable to retain stiff and cohesive uh, uh, subsoils and where ground water levels are below the eventual depth of excavation. The walls are constructed in uh, phase sequence with small edge gaps of 100 to 150 millimeters which is determined based on the nature of the soils. Secant pile retaining walls are formed by a series of interlocking board uh, concrete piles. Powerful uh, high torque drilling equipment all allows secant walls to be installed in the most challenging urban environment. Piles in the secant wall are spaced at 0.8 to 0.9 pile diameters and are constructed with altern alternate primary uh, piles and secondary piles to provide the necessary closed structure. The structure will then act as a barrier in water bearing uh, soils and prevent prevents the ingress of soil between the piles. Uh, the pile is called uh, uh, hard uh, if it is uh, concrete and called soft if it is made up of uh, from deep mixing soil which we will cover very soon the first phase piles and secant uh, piled wall can be either hard or soft while the second phase piles are always hard a soft hard secant piled wall offers uh, the most cost effective and rapid solution by interlocking the primary reinforced uh, concrete hard piles with uh, secondary piles of using uh, uh, bentonite cement materials, soft. So hard hard secant piled uh, walls are more expensive and slower but provide more watertight retaining walls that can be used as permanent basement walls instead of just temporary uh, retaining walls. Uh, the top left photo is for uh, sp uh, space uh, space pile uh, retaining walls. We can see a kind of rip uh, in the top part of the uh, top third part of it, uh, which is a whaling beam, and we can see uh, also the heads of the ground anchors. The lower photo uh, shows crews working on installing drainage sheets between the pile caps to properly drain the water seepage. The right photo shows a drilled pile wall with H steel sections were used instead of reinforced uh, rebar. 
and soil mixed uh, wool uh, uh, we utilize the deep soil mixing DSM method where instead of excavating the soil it's treated in situ to make it uh, easier to dig, to dig and provide concrete like strength when it cures. The soil is treated by mixing it with cement binders like cement and lime to create a low viscosity liquid called bentonite slurry. The slurry is, is produced on site and fed into the drilling rig through pipes, which gets smaller into jet pipes uh, in, inside the auger axis that is equipped with rotating digging tools like uh, auger flights. Uh, like auger flights, uh, winds, blades, or paddles. While the auger drills into the ground, the jet pipes uh, at the auger tip ejects the slurry under pressure to break the soil and blend with, with it. Eventually, the H, -beam, H steel beams are lowered into the soil mix uh, pile before the cement starts to cure. The H beam is suspended from a rigging above the wall uh, segment with the desired vertical leveling. The auger that drills these DSM piles can come in single axis or multi axis uh, drills. The right lower figure shows an example of a two axis auger uh, creating two DSM piles at once. The piles are created in patterns with gap in between, which is drilled later to create DSM piles similar to the secant piled concrete walls. Let's uh, observe uh, this DSM retaining wall construction that occurred in the Transit Center Tower in uh, San Francisco. You will see the uh, excavators digging the topsoil uh, uh, layer to clear the way for the auger and also create a small puddle of bentonite slurry around the drilled pile. The video started with the steel beam uh, that is being placed in the, D in the DSM pile that was just drilled. Uh, the last uh, retaining wall uh, system we'll cover today is the diaphragm slurry wall, which is similar to the DSM soldier pile, but utilizes a specialized uh, large cutting uh, head to create soil deep cuts that are protected with soil slurry and filled with reinforced concrete. The lower figure shows the process for constructing uh, a slurry wall which we can illustrate better using the following video. The animation video starts with setting up the site. The uh, bentonite slurry production unit.
soil copper. with large digging clams to remove the first topsoil uh, layer of the wall print. And then it is equipped with the soil cutter. Soil slurry in the wall trench is returned to the rigging crane and then to the slurry machine to remove excess soil content and replace it with cemented, cement, cemented, cemented material. Soil nails and anchors have similarities on the surface, but they have different outworking mechanisms. Uh, anchors are drilled and grouted similar to ground anchors with some different installation details. Also nails are installed in progression following the soil uh, excavation left by left. For each row of nails, shot crate is uh, sprayed on the reinforcement mesh entangled with the nails on the wall uh, surface. After the excavation reaches the final grade and uh, the last, uh, last uh, nail row is drilled, grouted and shot created, a final layer of shot crate is sprayed. There are some key differences between uh, anchors and nails. Anchors are generally pre-stressed and are actively resisting the soil lateral load, but soil nails provide passive resistance to the soil lateral load by requiring some soil deformation to start supporting the earth wall. You can simply recognize a nailed wall by counting them. A retaining wall requires more nails than anchors under the same lateral look. Also look for the whales. Anchors are identified easily with their whaling beams. Nails compensate for the absence of whales by increasing their number and the, used, uh, and the use of reinforced shotcrete layers. Finally, uh, nailed walls are more common for retaining walls along roadways with minimal soil uh, Deflection is acceptable when when minimal soil def deflection is acceptable. 
Uh, ground anchors are common in deep excavations of buildings where strong retaining walls are needed to minimize the soil set settlement around the project. We are done with uh, the, the most common retaining wall systems. Now let's check the dewatering systems. Dewatering is very critical to have a dry, deep finish, uh, finished excavation and avoid any soil boiling at the excavation bottom. Dewatering is done through a ground wells, uh, through ground wells that suck the water with the help of different types of pumps and the water is collected through a network of pipe, pipes. There are two main pump types that are commonly used in construction. The centrifugal uh, pumps uh, pushes the water by its rotating uh, impeller. Uh, the pump can be a single stage uh, centrifugal if, only, uh, if it has only one impeller. Uh, and um, the multi-stage pump is uh, uh, if it is equipped with two impellers or more. Submersible pumps are used in dewatering tunnels, foundation pits, and trenches. Uh, submersible uh, submersible uh, pumps are uh, placed under the water surface, eliminating the need for suction pipes. Uh, also, this means that there are more quiet, uh, th there are more quiet than centrifugal uh, pumps. <coughs> Let's now agree on some technical terms. The pump uh, should be designed uh, to lift water from the water surface uh, to the discharge level. The elevation difference between the pump impeller axis and the water surface is called the static suction lift, while the elevation difference between the pump and the discharge point is called the static discharge head. From basic physics, we know that if we placed uh, risers along the pumping uh, pipe, we should see the water rising to the same level all in all these risers. At the pump is si as the pump is sized right, it creates water pressure that's enough to lift the water from its elevation to the discharged uh, uh, discharge elevation, which should be visible in the riser. This figure is theoretical, uh, and if it, this happens, we will not get water at the discharge point. Meaning, sizing the pump to the total uh, static head will not deliver the water to the discharge elevation. But why? Uh, the answer is in friction. Uh, the water flowing through the pipes and fixtures and the valves uh, experiences friction that uh, wastes some of the pumping power. This means that the pump should be sized to account for both the total static head and the friction experienced in the system, which we can uh, call the dynamic pressure. Uh, the table provides the friction losses that uh, happen in steel and iron pipes. You can see that every pipe diameter has a range of feasible water flows. For example, a 4-inch pipe at the flow uh, can deliver the water at a flow range of uh, 50 to 700 uh, gallons per minute. The lower, lower and higher flows are not feasible in average pumping operation. The table quantifies the friction losses in uh, feet of water header per 100 linear foot of piping. For example, a 3-inch pipe, steel pipe, with 100 gallons per minute will result in friction losses of 3.2 feet of water head per 100 feet of the pipe. This table quantifies the friction and fittings that valves and additional equivalent pipe length that can be added to the physical run through uh, run length of uh, the pipes. For example, the water friction from a 90 degrees uh, elbow uh, on a 1 inch pipe is equivalent to the friction from uh, 2.8 feet uh, of the pipe. 
This figure shows the process to select a pump or uh, check the adequacy of a pipe before you start uh, uh, to the adequacy of a pump. Uh, before you start, you will need to have the shown input. The first step is to get the equivalent pipe length of all the fittings and valves on the pump line. Second, calculate the total equivalent pipe length, TEL, by adding the physical length to the fittings equivalent length. Third, uh, use table one from the previous slide to identify uh, the additional water head that's created from the pipe friction in feet per 100 linear pipe uh, feet. Then calculate the total dynamic head, TDH, uh, by adding the friction loss to the total static head. Use TDH uh, and the pump suction left to identify the pump feasible capacity and compare it to the required pumping rate. Look for the exercise video to illustrate these steps in checking the feasibility of using a pump or a dewatering operation. Dewatering is commonly done with the help of uh, well point systems. The system is composed of one, uh, first the, the well points that are drilled uh, at around five feet spacing around the excavation area. Two, uh, a riser, uh, perforated pipe that's dropped in each well point. Three, suction header pipes uh, that collect the water from a group of well point risers and for the dewatering pump. The riser quality installation is very critical to maximize the pump performance. Filters and sand fillings uh, in the well point around the riser can help make sure that the under underground water flows without clogging the riser perforated pipe. Uh, well point dewatering systems are limited to 20 feet of water suction head. For deeper operations, uh, a two-stage well point system needs to be installed. By dewatering and sucking the water from each well, the groundwater table is lowered from its uh, original level and, follow, uh, and follows a depressed water table profile. The capacity of the well point system is dependent on many factors, including the uh, soil permeability and the required required uh, level uh, groundwater uh, level lowering the shown graph shows uh, provides some guidance in estimating the achievable pumping rate considering the water lower, lowering requirement the vertical axis and the soil type the different um, you know different diagonal axis uh, you can see that uh, the high, that higher pumping rate can be achieved for more coarse uh, soils compared to uh, compare like compare between the range of pumping rate of uh, for under the diagonal lines of the gravel versus very fine sand. Here is an example of how to use the figure. Consider the need for lowering the water cable by 10 feet and file uh, fine sand uh, soil. By using the chart we can conclude that the pumping rate will be 0.6 gallons per minute per each header pipe. That's it for uh, this lesson. Please check the exercise video and see you in another video.